artificial oocyte activation in general and strontium chloride uh, mainly uh, based on our uh, publication in human reproduction uh, 2018. Uh, before the start, is one, one thing to, uh, that we need to talk is IVF and XC are effective treatment. So we will talk about an add-on treatment or extra treatment, but not for an invention of such treatment. However, despite the uh, advances with XC, uh, there remain around 3 to 5% of XC cycle uh, will end up with fertilization failure. Fertilization, by definition, uh, is a sequence of biological process initiated by entry of spermatozoon into a natural oocyte, onto a mature oocyte, followed by formation of pronuclei. Successful fertilization requires uh, oocyte activation, which depend on interaction between the gametes. Before fertilization, mammal, uh, mammalian oocytes remain arrested at the metaphase 2, a phenomena require uh, elevation uh, before subsequent embryogenesis may proceed. This meiotic arrest is released through a series of event termed oocyte activation, including cortical granulo granuloexocytosis, second polar body, emission, pronuclear formation, and subsequent division. In normal fertilization, the phospholipase C zeta uh, of a fertilizing spermatozoon produce inositol triphosphate with, uh, within the oocyte, which interact uh, with the receptors in the endoplasmic reticulum releasing or causing uh, calcium oscillation to trigger the oocyte activation. The oocyte also contribute to the activation events via identified and other unidentified factors with the precise mechanism underlying the oocyte activation remain not fully understood so far. Uh, here is the major point that we need to know. The calcium wave intense duration repetition are likely responsible for the effective activation. So whether a single or multiple calcium waves are uh, the better uh, initiator. In this, in this photo, the upper is a single wave and in the uh, lowest half of the, of the photo is multiple waves. In animal models, the, the duration, amplitude, and frequency of calcium affect the normal oocyte activation and embryo development. Okay. Whenever the physiological mechanism is impaired, the artificial oocyte activation can rescue the fertilization and the downstream event. For the artificial, the artificial oocyte activation, there is mechanical, electrical, chemical activation uh, to do so. Mechanical activation is accomplished by vigorous aspiration of cytoplasm during the XC, which result in major calcium increase. The mechanical protocol can overcome both sperm-related and oocyte-related activation deficiency. The electrostimulation uh, alters the activation potential of ion channels to the oplasmic membrane. So, the application of electrical pulses created ionic channel to the oocyte, allowing for calcium entry from the surrounding medium. To date, the chemical activation is the most commonly used and most efficient oocyte activation. Uh, approach in practice. Calcimycin, ionomycin, pyromycin increase membrane permeability to extracellular calcium and induce single uh, prolonged calcium wave. As I, as, I, as, I, uh, as I said, there is a single calcium wave can be produced or multiple calcium wave can be produced artificially. Those, what's so called in the market is calcium ionophore, either calcimycin, ionomycin, pyromycin, or whatever. There is also another factors 
called strontium chloride. Strontium chloride or maybe also anhydrous alcohol can release a calcium from the endoplasmic reticulum in waves, in pulsatile waves. This factor is different in its in their mechanism rather than the also the, the calcium ionophore. The calcium ionophore is an enforcement of a calcium wave from the surrounding medium, while the strontium chloride is the initiation of the endoplasmic reticulum of the oocyte to release its its own calcium, no calcium from the surrounding. Two meta-analyses are available with contradictory conclusion regarding the artificial oocyte activation for, embryo, for improving embryological and clinical outcome with cycle with fertilization failure. However, that analyses include retrospective studies, historical comparison, or relatively underpowered studies. Most of the studies have only examined calcimycin artificial oocyte activation, although <clears throat> strontium chloride has shown potential for artificial oocyte activation in other reports. No comparative randomized controlled trial evaluated the relatively evaluated the relative effectiveness of calcimycin and strontium chloride compared with XC alone. Despite the lack of clear evidence, the procedure has been continued to be promoted. We decided to take part uh, the, uh, addressing this issue will, and we come up, to, uh, come up with a publication 2018 in human reproduction comparing the calci, calcium ionophore versus uh, strontium chloride versus the XC alone in uh, randomized prospective comparison. We included infertile couple with, uh, who uh, were undergoing XC cycle for previous low fertilization which was defined as lower than 30% in previous cycle, uh, but normal semen parameter. This group was low fertilization failure despite the normal semen parameter according to the WHO criteria. And a second group was XC cycle undergoing their first attempt due to male factor, male factor infertility with abnormal sperm morphology. We classified previous cycle of low fertilization as unexplained low fertilization or as low fertilization associated with embedded oocyte morphology, but within normal sperm parameter. The male factor infertility cycle were either frozen cycle sperm, surgically retrieved sperm, or ejaculate sperm containing lower than 10 million spermatozoa per milli undergoing their first XE attempt with 100% abnormal sperm morphology, including globus spermia in some cycle. This is a flow chart of the study we did between April 2015 to uh, January to, uh, 2016, but with uh, a screening period of close to 18 months before recruitment for these cycles and then inviting some of them to uh, take part in a trial regarding uh, and methodologies that can help them improving their fertility, uh, which was intended to make the duration of this study sh as short as possible to uh, counteract for any possible uh, culture condition impact on the trial or uh, manipulation of uh, stimulation protocols or whatever. So we uh, were tight in uh, this point for this trial. This trial included 115 in the uh, calcimycin group or the calcium ionophore group and 113 group in uh, women in the uh, strontium chloride group and 115 women in the traditional XC group. Our intervention were the use of strontium chloride, as I said, or calcimycin or XC alone. 
the results uh, of the cycle characteristic baseline characteristics were uh, comparable except here for uh, the number of uh, mature oocyte uh, which is incorrectly reported unfortunately in our analysis of the data we find that uh, this 13 is 12 and this 12 is 11 and this 11 is 10 point Five, but with no effect on the overall conclusion. But it's just a reanalysis of uh, of the data. We are doing this every now and then to reanalyze our studies data to find if uh, actually when we advance in statistical methodologies, then we reanalyze our data again to see how we reported it correctly or not. And for this study, we reported it correctly, uh, except for these points, and these points found not affecting the overall conclusion of the study. The, the intention to treat analysis of this study for the uh, embryo development revealed that regardless of cleavage rate, strontium chloride significantly improved the fertilization rate and its consequence to blastocyst and cryopreservation rate. For cycle of previous implant, imp, imp, impaired fertilization but normal semen parameter, strontium chloride was found to improve embryo development more effectively uh, than calcimycin compared with ICSI alone. For cycle with male factor infertility related to abnormal sperm morphology, calcimycin was more effective than strontium chloride when both compared to XC alone. For strontium chloride and calcimycin regarding the clinical outcome, artificial uh, both improved the live birth rate compared to XC alone. Among couple with previous uh, low fertilization, we found strontium chloride activation significantly improved the rate of live birth and live birth implantation compared with XC alone, whereas calcium, calcimycin artificial oocyte activation and the XC alone were comparable. Calcimycin might be less effective than strontium chloride because it induces a single calcium wave that is not converted into oscillation, which could explain why calcimycin artificial oocyte activation and the ICSI alone were comparable in this subgroup. Neither sperm entry nor ICSI appeared sufficient to initiate oocyte activation, which is likely related to the activation defect of the oocyte. So, Calcimycin artificial oocyte activation appear to be not beneficial for ICSI cycle with previous embedded fertilization, but normal semen parameter. Among couples with male factor infertility but abnormal sperm morphology, calcimycin uh, activation significantly improve the rate of live pairs and the live pairs implantation whereas strontium chloride activation and the ICSI alone were comparable. It is likely that when the problem results from male factor infertility, calcium oscillation machinery is functional in the oocyte but it has insufficient stimulation by the ICSI alone with the affected sperm. Calcimycin activation provide additional calcium entry from the surrounding medium, boosting the initiation of calcium oscillation. In this situation, strontium chloride may have less effect because the defect is not with the calcium oscillation machinery itself, but just the initiation of the, the, <coughs> the oscillation. Overall, comparing strontium chloride with calcimycin artificial oocyte activation resulted in comparable clinical outcome. For male factor subgroup, comparing the strontium chloride with calcimycin result in similar outcome. For previous impaired fertilization cycle, strontium chloride was superior to calcimycin activation, resulting in higher rate of live pairs and live pairs implantation. 
This study has some strengths and weaknesses. The study represents the first of uh, the first RCT with an appropriate sample size to compare strontium chloride with calcium isin for artificial oocyte activation. Although clinical pregnancy uh, was the primary outcome, uh, we assessed the ongoing and life birth rate of the study. Uh, these findings provide insights into the relative suitability of strontium chloride and calcium isin for artificial oocyte activation for particular causes of infertility, which can improve the outcome for subgroup of patients who experience poor outcome of ICSI. The open label trial design might have introduced some bias although randomization at least partly addressed this possibility of this study. Uh, the study didn't did include a longitudinal follow-up period, so further evidence regarding the safety of artificial oocyte activation is still required. The study included couples with different indication for ICSI rather than focusing on a single subgroup, but the post-hook analyses were performed to determine the particular effect of artificial oocyte activation in this subgroup. Uh, ICSI followed by artificial oocyte activation with strontium chloride or calcimycin was associated with significantly better embryological and clinical outcome than ICSI alone. Calcimycin artificial oocyte activation appear effective in overcome defects related to abnormal sperm function. Strontium chloride artificial oocyte activation appear to improve outcome for ICSI cycle characterized by previous implantation failure. The long-term safety and transgenerational effect of artificial oocyte activation are thus far unknown, so that we do not recommend this treatment to the general ICSI population. Instead, we recommend that more studies are performed to further elucidate the mechanisms that underlie this finding, in particular those related to the strontium chloride activation. It is also recommended that multi-center artificial oocyte activation trial should be used, should be conducted to identify, identifying the cumulative life birth rate as a primary outcome, including the offspring health as also a primary outcome. Until these studies are conducted, artificial oocyte activation should be used cautiously, and here we, under, we underline this, should be used cautiously, not routinely, as some of the centers overseas doing this, artificial oocyte activation should be used cautiously, and the advantages and disadvantage regarding its use should be weighed in each uh, case. The decision, uh, in every single procedure is to choose wisely. Choosing wisely should be our concept uh, in our life. So, Adama, I was the primary investigator of this study. I would like to comment that this was the first uh, study with the maximum number si uh, sample size that I know. Uh, uh, addressing this issue, but when we uh, we have to take a substantial, we need to take a substantial conclusion. This sample size is not sufficient. The sample size of 115 per arm is not sufficient. So to have a substantial conclusion on this issue, you need at least to uh, to uh, recruit around. 2,200 2, participants in the three arm prospectively, so you can have your conclusion substantial. So, as I, as I, as a, as a, as a the investigator of this study, I could entitle it as a pilot proof of concept trial, and based on this, we have to choose wisely which patient will require which agent for the artificial oocyte activation as we should know and we should believe in IVF or in every, in every medical category in the rule 
او رول 1 ان اور براكتس از تو دو نو هارم اند ثانك يو فيري ماتش